All right, folks, so this week I am going to show you how to do a leak down test on a two-stroke dirt bike with a homemade leak down tester. Now, pretty much everyone's familiar with the compression test, but I would go as far as saying anyone who rides a two-stroke especially should have and make themselves a leak down tester. It is almost better than a compression tester at diagnosing issues. Anyway, first get your patient on the shop floor, then by now you've already earned your first beer, so go grab that. This isn't too bad a job, it shouldn't take you too long, so I'd hazard a guess, probably a two to three beer uh, kind of situation we're looking at here. Then you're going to want to remove your seat, as pretty much always with anything you have to do on these things. Next, start removing the three 12 millimeter subframe bolts because it's got to come off. Then grab your spring puller. Again, all I have is just a uh, flat blade screwdriver with a slot cut in that I use as a and grinder. And loosen off and remove the eight millimeter bolts that hold down the air expansion pipe. And do this before I take off the springs and then take off your exhaust springs with your spring puller. Then carefully wiggle off the pipe. Then remove the clamp from the air box to the carburetor and slightly pull back and lift up and wiggle off the boot. And go put the whole entire subframe with your pipe on your parts holder, also known as your old lady snowmobile. Then go ahead and remove the rear shock and set it aside. Then you have to remove the whole carburetor, so take off the fuel line and then loosen the final boot clamp and wiggle the carburetor off and kind of set it off to the side. I tied mine up out of the way after a little while. So here's my homemade leak down tester. They're pretty simple to make. I might make a video on how I did it. Uh, it cost me probably 60 bucks. It's very, very simple. All you need is an on-off valve that I've got there where shop air comes in, a low pressure gauge. All we need is about five to 10 PSI and a standard air hose with an air chuck and a few adapters. For the uh, exhaust plugs, I normally use like these freeze, freeze plug adapters and the PVC pipes are, are for the intake manifolds themselves. So for the YZ today, I, th I think I use the inch and a half uh, diameter PVC pipe. So slide it in there, and clamp it down. We want a tight seal, no air leaks. Make sure it's tight. Next, clean up the exhaust port of any spooge. Uh, it's not only a good idea so you don't get it in inside your exhaust port and engine, but uh, just that that stuff's hard to get on a normal basis, so uh, it's a good, good time with the pipe off to clean it all up. Now here's the moment I realized my round freeze plugs will not work in this YZ with the squared kind of exhaust port. Most bikes are completely circular and round, so I had to go to plan B, went to the hardware store, got myself a rubber coupling and uh, it's a two inch down to one and a half rubber coupler with a few galvanized steel uh, fittings. A little look ugly but it works. So slide it in, clamp it down. Again we don't want any air leaks and that's my finished product. I thread that on the exhaust port and it actually fit pretty tight. and. Uh, clamp it down. Next go over your air compressor. Make sure your regulator is turned all the way down. You do not want any more than 9 psi. I'm shooting for 6 or 7 uh, because you will blow your bottom end seals. So open up the valve on your test unit because the gauge, I trust the ga gauge on the test unit more than I do the compressor and wind it up till you get the pressure you want. And that way you know you will not overshoot. Before we get going here, it's best to probably crack open another one because uh, why the hell not? My ears work better when I'm a little buzzed anyway, so. 
and before we even get started putting air into it, take off the radiator cap in case there's that bad of a leak that you pressurize your whole entire coolant system. You don't want to blow anything up there, so take that off. Then get your phone out, a timer, and I have the breather hose there open right now. I'm opening the valve. Pressure is building, but barely because it's leaking out of the valve, and just slowly close the valve, the breather with your thumb, and you'll watch the pressure come up to about 5 psi ish. And instead of holding it there with your thumb all day, what you can do is you can use some vice grips, which I do here. So you have the, the valve open right now, and I'm controlling the flow in case things get crazy with the vice grips and the breather hose. Because I don't want it to just, if my regulator failed my compressor, I do not want it spiking. So go nice and easy with the vice grips, close the breather hose off so you have no leaks. Then when you want to start your leak down, close the valve and start your timer. Now. A completely tight system should hold about say 5 psi for 5 minutes so that's what I'm going for here. Now while it's holding air spray everything down uh, with soapy water I went right for my reed block here because I could kind of hear something hissing out of there and the, the bubbles made it obvious. I really didn't anticipate seeing a leak at all in this bike seeing as it runs like an absolute top 50 hours in and uh, I kind of surprised myself once again the leak down test will show you things that you normally you can't pick this up on a compression test at all so I have an air leak on my my reed block somewhere and in this case after my five minutes my reed block lost about two and a half pounds of air uh, and uh, while I was doing this spray all over the cylinder base gasket the cylinder head gaskets the spark plug um, check for bubbles in your radiator because if your head gasket's leaking, it will start bubbling out of there. Listen all around for leaks. But uh, this one was my reed block, so I, I took it apart. It's got a little bit of sand and shit on it, so I'm going to clean everything up. And it being a Sunday, it's not like I can go get parts right away anyway. So I spread dielectric grease all over the mating surfaces after they were thoroughly cleaned. And this is kind of a stopgap measure for now. I really should get uh, proper gaskets and O-rings when I when I get a chance. And I reinstalled the reed block, torqued it down to 10 newton meters initially, and then went even a little past um, by feel. I won't wouldn't recommend doing this if you're not comfortable uh, with what typical fasteners feel like before they fail but uh, I just went just an extra little bit on each one here to make sure it, it was tight and here I go starting another test after fixing the reed block slowly clamping off the breather so it's not to spike closing the valve and starting my timer Give it a second spray and already I can tell it's a huge improvement. I'm not hearing, I'm not seeing any bubbles whatsoever coming out of the reed block. So that means I go have my celebratory beer because I'm pretty confident that this is going to work after five minutes. So I filled this one up to about six psi to start with. And uh, towards the end of my five minutes I went around everywhere and sprayed everything again just to make sure. And after five minutes, I only ended up losing about half a PSI of air, which to me is pretty damn tight. Uh, obviously, there's still a bit of a leak somewhere, but uh, for me to find something that minor over five minutes, it, it would take a lot of looking around. So that is a very tight engine. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed.